from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Veeam on 2020. Brought to you by Veeam. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of Veeam on 2020 online. Really happy to welcome to the program a first-time guest, and he is the Chief Information Security Officer at Veeam, Gil Vega. Thank you so much for joining us. Always love to chat with a CISO. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Stu. All right. So, so Gil, first, give us a little bit of your background, and you're relatively new than Veeam. Obviously, you know when you took the job, uh, the the current you know global uh, you know pandemic uh, wasn't uh, you know necessarily front and center. But uh, yeah, give give our audience a little bit of who you are. Yeah, yeah, timing is everything. I, um, I have, I've been at Veeam for 90 plus days, uh, joined the company just before the global pandemic uh, broke loose and sort of disrupted our entire, uh, our entire planet. Uh, before that, I was, uh, I was the CISO for five years of a, a systemically important financial services market utility, uh, but most of my experience is, um, is in government. I was uh, I was a federal executive for almost 20 years in Washington D.C., where I was a CISO at the Department of Energy, uh, Homeland Security, Naval Intelligence, and a, a few other places. Excellent. Well, that's a great pedigree. We love talking to the public sector people. Uh, obviously, security front and center uh, there always. But really, I mean, it's it's a board level discussion today. You know, uh, security so much of what's going on. I have to ask you though, with the global pandemic hitting, uh, obviously, you know, work from home is is, is a big piece of, of what's going on. Um, give us, you know, kind of your first reaction there, being new to the role. Uh, how do you make sure that you know Veeam itself is safe and that your customers, uh, as they're you know dealing with things, you know, can stay, stay secure? That's a that's a great question, and I don't think anyone can say they were 100% prepared for a global pandemic, the, the likes of which no one's ever really experienced before, at least in the modern age. But you know, Veeam is largely a uh, even though we're 5,000 strong and global, is largely a virtual uh, workforce. So a, a large majority of our um, our teammates work from home in mobile situations. So uh, the company has a long track record of providing really innovative and secure tools so that we can conduct our business, both you know with our customers, with, uh, with our sales teams generating leads, our technical teams developing product. Um, the technology here is uh, is is pretty impressive. I I, I will say. Um, uh, the impact to our workforce, at least from a virtual perspective, hasn't uh, has, hasn't been as significant as some more uh, traditional companies. Um, being the new CISO here at, uh, at Beam, it's a first time position for the company uh, who's taken this topic very seriously. It's uh, it, it has been for me personally a bit of a, a bit of a challenge in building my team. Obviously, uh, the infosec uh, space, cybersecurity space, is very competitive when you're trying to hire folks. Uh, and the the, uh, the pandemic obviously has made uh, has made folks think twice about transitioning or starting careers or changing companies. So it's put a little bit a little bit of a, a hitch in my step in terms of uh, overall planning. Uh, but we're moving on to some different strategies and uh, building the team a little little slower than we had anticipated. Yeah, well, de definitely understandable. Uh, put put a freeze for most people. We're hoping that that is starting to thaw uh, a little bit these days. I, I'm curious if you can share. You know, organizationally, this is a new role. Do you report to the CIO or you appear? What's been your experience with some of those organizational dynamics about where, you know, a CISO lives and reports in the org? Yeah, I think it, it really depends upon the company's culture, right? That drives where this role sits. At my, at my previous company, I worked for uh, the CIO who was a corporate officer. Uh, here at Veeam, uh, it is a new position. Uh, and there's such a significance placed on uh, cybersecurity because of the expectations around this topic, not only from our board, um, uh, our customers, uh, uh, our, the government, regulators, and everyone else. Uh, this role, my role, reports directly into Bill Large and our CEO, which you know fully empowers me as a as a member of the of, of the management team uh, of the entire company to drive the, the the initiatives that need to be driven so that. Uh, we can meet those expectations, which you know tend to uh, uh, rise every year from uh, expectations of our customers, product features in our in our products, uh, regulatory requirements, and so forth. So um, this space tends to get uh, more difficult, uh, more complex as time goes on. 
And I think uh, that Veeam has uh, constructed this role in an operating model that, um, that is going to make it highly successful. Yeah, well, you know, data security, absolutely such a critical piece uh, of, of today's landscape. You know, give us your thoughts about, you know, data security and, and really modern IT. Uh, and, you know, what, what is your charter to try to make sure that Veeam, you know, fits in there? Yeah, you know, Veeam is now a U.S. company, right? And th the idea here is to dry, continue to drive growth in, in North America. And one of the key components of that growth has to be the U.S. government. I, my, I have a pedigree with the U.S. government. I understand what the requirements are to do business there. So, again, back to those expectations. Uh, my charge here is to deliver us not only an internal cybersecurity program that continues to meet uh, and exceed those expectations, but to be able to position our products in a way that not only solves some of the data resiliency issues that the government faces and that our global customers face, but also help to solve some of these significant cybersecurity issues that they're trying to manage. You know, in the boardroom, cybersecurity is 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 essentially the number one operational risk now, with a lot of focus. Uh, across uh, not only the boards, but all the functional areas of the company, whether it's finance, sales, technology, and security. It's, it's just seems to be the topic that everyone's most concerned about. We just want to make sure that we're positioned in a way um, that, uh, that drives what we're delivering here as a competitive advantage. Yeah, well, what, what are some keys to considerations for uh, data security on modern businesses? I, I'm sorry, you broke up, could you? Repeat that question, Stu. Sure, just just looking for some kind of some of the key security considerations uh, for modern business. Yeah, you know um, there are uh, there, there's there's so many, right? I tend to focus on uh, the simple things for most companies, right? The uh, the priorities that every CISO ought to have uh, are around um, you know this the, the blocking and tackling of a risk based vulnerability management program, making sure that you're identi uh, you're managing identities so that the right people have the right access to the right resources at the right time. Um, you you got to have those strong and fast cyber ops because you will have incidents, right? We all know that. Uh, if you're a CISO in a company, not uh, you're not managing incidents. Chances are you're not seeing incidents, which is probably worse than um, than not having them. Um, the other thing that, that I've learned uh, as a key consideration for protecting your company coming from government is this concept of information sharing and making sure that you're, uh, that, you're, that you're not only speaking with your peer companies, but your competitors as well, because they're seeing an awful lot of the same issues that, that you will see or have seen, and there's really no competitive advantage in information sharing amongst uh, CISOs in, 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 in uh, various industry communities and financial services. I feel like they've optimized that where I came from. Uh, I would talk with uh, CISOs at my competing firms on a, on a weekly basis, uh, comparing notes, talking about threats, understanding threat actors, talking about technology and so forth, just trying to provide for uh, this sense of collective defense that those in the financial services industry has together. Um, and then, you know, obviously for the last several years, there's got to be a deep understanding of the, the differences in managing cybersecurity in the cloud and what that entails and, you know, holding those vendors uh, accountable for your security requirements. You can outsource the technology, but you can't outsource the tech, uh, the risk. So you, you have to be able to understand how the cloud changes uh, the risk that you're facing um, from the internet. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so glad you brought up, uh, you know, I, I think back earlier in my career, you go back you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, and you know, could IT be a differentiator? And therefore there wasn't necessarily that sharing among peer group, or they were very careful how they did things because, oh wait, I tried this new project and I might have some advantage, but you, you know, as you said, security is something we need to, as a community, get involved with. And uh, you also brought up cloud. So, you know, if we look at cloud models today, we understand it needs to be really a shared responsibility model. Um, so, you know, how should people be thinking about cloud? Uh, how should they be, uh, you know, moving forward with, you know, really the, these multitudes of environments that they need to deal with? Yeah, you know, we could, we could probably have an hour show uh, and talk about some of the scar tissue that I've gained over the years in managing cloud programs. The number one, uh, the number one thing I would talk about, and I think it's probably the most important thing, is making sure you understand exactly what security services your cloud provider is providing, and don't assume 
um, that they're going to meet your requirements. You need to understand what those requirements are, whether or not they fit your business and operations model, and whether or not they're, um, um, they're, they're capable of meeting the risk appetite that you've set for yourself and communicated to your board. Uh, in, 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 certain some, in certain cases, the default cloud uh, security services won't meet those uh, expectations, and you'll have to work with the cloud vendors to augment those in a way that make, uh, that make it uh, more uh, acceptable for your, uh, for your risk profile and for your business. Um, I've often talked with peers who, um, uh, at companies, smaller companies, who just assume that the large cloud providers are going to take care of everything that you used to take care of on-prem. Uh, and in fact, there are just certain things uh, that are happening in the cloud that are completely different than on-prem situation as it relates to cyber. And you've got to have a really good understanding of, of, of how those are differentiated uh, because if, uh, if, if you're making assumptions about the level of cybersecurity services that you're procuring in the cloud, uh, it's probably going to turn around and bite you at some point. Yeah, it, it, I, I laugh a little bit. I think in, in the pre-cloud era, it was you, know, you need to be careful because just somebody that is either lazy or you know, being a little bit malicious uh, could you know, go against any security things that you set. Well, if you right. go to the cloud, you know, some things have changed, but many things haven't. I need to make sure that I've adjusted those settings. Oh wait, there's something I should have looked into or added to, <laughs> let, let me make sure I adjust those. I think, at least I think the cloud providers are you know, a little bit more engaged after some key you know, uh, kinks in the armor uh, that, that were seen. So uh, the, the, there've been a little bit more awareness of what's going on uh, and uh, everybody is engaging a little bit more. Um, Gil, uh, governance and ransomware, things that I've, I've talked to for many years about Beam, how does that fit into uh, your, your overall discussion? Um, you know, governance is probably one of the most overlooked but most important components of a cybersecurity program that's effective. Um, we don't do cybersecurity just to do cybersecurity. We're trying to meet key business objectives. We're trying to meet customer expectations. We're trying to support technology integration programs and having all of the efforts of the CISO and his or her organization governed uh, correctly within the corporate structure is just absolutely critical. Here at Veeam, uh, the, um, uh, my function is governed uh, by, the board of, by the board of directors as it is in most large companies. So they're interested obviously in the health status of the projects that I'm, uh, that I'm leading, the initiatives that I'm driving, the transformations that are occurring across the globe. They're interested in uh, understanding exactly how the product feature sets in our in our um, in our products are being informed by the experiences of our of our internal team and what our customers need. Uh, for us, it's very important to provide that oversight and insight into everything that we're doing uh, at the highest levels, so that uh, so that our board of directors can have a really good understanding of uh, of overall risk of the uh, of the organization and what we're facing. Uh, Gil, a final question I have for you. Just key priorities going forward. What should we be looking for from Veeam and uh, the, the security practice particularly? Yeah, sure. So we've uh, we've gone and uh, we've adopted uh, a new security framework. We've adopted the NIST cybersecurity framework version 1.1. .1. We're leading uh, ourselves through a, a maturity assessment based on that framework. We're setting uh, objective um, uh, maturity uh, measures for each of the components of our cybersecurity program based on the NIST cybersecurity framework. And we're driving some transformation across the globe to make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can to protect uh, not only the company, but our customers' data, our products, uh, and so forth. We're also positioning ourselves in a way to, uh, to as I said earlier, enhance our business opportunities with, with the U.S. government. Uh, and adopting the NIST cybersecurity framework is probably the first step in a in a long program to um, to be able to do much more much more business with uh, with our government counterparts. All right. Well, Gil Vega, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, really pleasure to talk talk with you. Very good. Thanks, Stu. All right. Be back with lots more coverage from Vimon 2020 online. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching the Cube.